In this video, we will show you how to replace your transmission governor pressure solenoid on this Dodge Ram. This will be located behind your transmission pan. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we'll do is make our way under the hood along the passenger side. We're looking for the transmission dipstick. Go ahead and remove that and give the fluid a quick check. It's always a good idea to know what you're working with. With that said, we'll wipe this off and set it aside. The first thing I want to mention is it's a good idea to make sure you have a brand new filter and a gasket to do this job. Let's make our way safely underneath the vehicle with a collection bucket that can fit underneath this area. We'll start removing each of our 13 millimeter headed bolts that make their way all the way around. When I do this, I typically like to leave one bolt on either side of the pan while I continue all the way around to prevent fluid from coming out while I remove all the bolts. We'll inspect things as we remove it and replace them as necessary. I'll leave this one in here. I'll skip this one. Now we can prepare to remove the fluid from inside of the pan. The way that we will do this is by carefully loosening each of these bolts and tipping the pan in one direction or the other. I typically like to tip it rearward so it won't land on anything, aside from the collection receptacle. So I can control this, I'll be using a ratchet to loosen these other two. Get some fluid coming out along the front here. At this point, we'll let this trickle out until it stops. Now that this finally slowed down a little bit, let's continue loosening this mounting bolt. There we are, we can take that right out of there. No more fluid is coming out of the pan at this point, so we'll continue on by holding up the pan and removing our final bolt, and then eventually the pan from the transmission. This still has a lot of fluid in it. You want to be extremely careful. We'll make sure we recycle this properly. Now that we have the pan out of the way, let's pay attention in this area. Looking along this area, you'll see that you have a bracket held in place with three 11 millimeter headed bolts. Let's remove all three. Now that we have all three of those bolts out, we'll be paying attention to these last two T25 torque screws. Let's remove each of these. We'll hold on to this. Now we can take hold of this bracket and we'll start pulling it down. Keep in mind there could be fluid under this area. There we are. 
Now that we have this pulled down, we can remove the bracket. Now let's have a look at the wiring harness. You'll find that you have a small locking tab right along this area here. You can use a small screwdriver or possibly your fingernail. Just gently pull this up and separate this. And there it is, friends. With that out of place, the next thing that we will do is pay attention in the mounting port. We'll use a clean rag that does not have any detergent on it. Clean and inspect the hole. There we are. It's okay if it has a little bit of transmission fluid on there. We're going to be lubricating the gaskets on our brand new solenoid anyway. All right, let's get ready to install our brand new solenoid here. As I had mentioned, I will be using a glove finger with some clean transmission fluid to lubricate each of my O-rings. You have one down along this area and one up along this larger area. Now we can take this and put it into the bracket. Should slide right in there. Let's continue on with that wiring harness. Press it in, listen for a click. And now we'll bring this up, making sure that we put this area around our governor. We'll slide everything in. It should slide in nice and easy. If you have to force it, it's not aligned properly. get these two mounting bolts started in as well. Once we have all of them started, we can snug them up. Let's use our T25 to tighten these two. We'll just make sure they're bottomed out and then take it just a little bit further. Now we can tighten all three of these 11 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Once again, it's bottomed out. We'll make sure it's snug using a stubby ratchet. The next thing you will want to do is clean the inside and outside of your transmission pan. You'll notice that you should have a small magnet. Clean off any of the debris on that area. Once you have it clean, we can get ready for our installation. Now, if you did get yourself a filter, you want to replace that right now. We'll do that by removing two T25 headed mounting bolts. They're inside of each of these holes. There's one. This other one. Sometimes this does hold a little bit of fluid on top of it. We'll be careful for that and we can set this aside. Now that we have the filter out of there, let's clean and inspect the mounting area. This is your valve body. This area right along here is where your fluid is going to be making its way through. Commonly, the gasket that should be with that filter will be still located here. You wanna make sure you remove it and dispose of it properly. Now we'll use a clean rag and just wipe everything down. You never wanna use a detergent or any type of parts cleaner in this area. All right, let's get ready for the installation of our brand new filter. We'll take this and put it in place, making sure that we do have a gasket on that filter. Once you feel as though you have it in place, we'll continue on with our mounting bolt. I'm going to slide it right on through that center hole here. Start that bolt in. There we are. We'll leave it nice and loose and do the same exact thing to the other one. We'll use a short quarter inch ratchet to make sure this is nice and tight. Once it bottoms out, just give it a little extra. We'll do the same on the other one here. Once these are snug, we'll torque them to 40 inch pounds. Double check to make sure that's completely secure. Let's continue on to cleaning up the area on the transmission where the gasket will go. We want to wipe this down, give it a close inspection for any debris. If you see something on here, carefully use a scraper, but you don't want to damage the aluminum of your transmission.
Now it's time to prepare to put our pan on there. We'll make sure that we align the gasket with each one of the mounting bolt holes. Take that pan and put it up to the transmission. Once again, aligning the mounting bolt holes. We'll continue on with each of our mounting bolts. At this point, all we will do is start them in. Once you have all of them started in, we'll continue on to snugging them. I'll put one on each side of this to hold the pan while I continue. Now that they're all started, let's snug them up. And once they're snug, we'll torque them to 105 inch pounds. For good measure, I'll go around one more time. Okay, now let's just go ahead and clean up our mess. Once we're sure everything's nice and clean, we can make our way back up into the engine compartment. Now up under the hood, we'll continue on with a funnel right inside that transmission dipstick tube. We'll continue on with some ATF plus four, and we'll start with approximately seven quarts. At this point, I've added approximately seven quarts of ATF plus four. I'll continue on by putting the transmission dipstick back in place. The next thing that I'll do is make my way into the passenger compartment. I'm going to start up the vehicle, let it run and get up to operating temperature. While doing so, I will run it through the gears down into reverse, pause, neutral, pause, drive, pause, and then the rest of the way down, pausing in each gear. Once I've made my way down to the bottom, I'll make my way back up all the way to the top, pausing in each one of the gears. We'll do this several times while the vehicle gets up to normal operating temperature. Let's give this one last check here. Now, as you can tell, looking at this dipstick, we have our small dot here, and up above it, we have the hatched area. My fluid level is right up to the top of that hatched area, which is exactly where it should be. We'll give that a quick wipe to make sure there's no debris on it and reinsert it. At this point, I'll turn off the truck. Okay, friends, at this point, you can go ahead and close the hood, double check to make sure you don't have any leaks, and then take your vehicle for a road test and make sure the transmission shifts perfectly. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.